Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is look at a problem of a car accident and we're going to look at the forces uh, during this collision. Uh, my goal is going to be to calculate what is the average force on a car when you hit a concrete barrier, for example. Uh, what's the force on the car? What is the force on the man? Now we're going to have to make a couple of assumptions when we try to simplify this problem because you can imagine how complicated it is with uh, the car kind of coming into contact with this concrete block. Um, there's a lot of different materials at play with a lot of different properties, but how can we analyze it just using basic physics, making realistic assumptions? Okay, so we're first gonna do some of the math to set up an equation to calculate now the average force. Then we're gonna plug in some numbers to get an order of magnitude of how big these forces are. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, let's get started. All right, so let's have a look at just some of our uh, statements here. So we have before and after. So before we have this car that's uh, traveling uh, to the right here at some velocity. Okay, so we're going to assume now that the velocity is going to be quite high. Let's say it's 60 miles per hour. Okay, so first thing I want to do is maybe convert that into meters per second so I can calculate the force in newtons at the end of the day. Uh, so I want to get rid of miles. Uh, maybe get meters over here. I know in one mile there is like 1,609 meters. And then I can also get rid of hours. And I want to get uh, seconds at the end. I know in one hour there is 3,600 seconds. So if I do this uh, conversion, I get 26.8 uh, meters per second as my speed. Okay, so that's my initial speed. Uh, my final is easy, right? The V final here has to be zero because you come to a stop. So this is going to be my initial velocity. Now I'm gonna look at two things. I'm gonna look at uh, the man, okay? Uh, the man here is gonna have a mass. Uh, the mass of the man, we're gonna assume here it's 80 kilograms. I'm gonna look for what is the force acting on the man. And then there's also the car, okay? So the car has a much bigger mass. For this problem, I'm gonna assume it's 2,000 kilograms. Now, a couple other things we have to look at now is, look at the stopping distance, right? This car here compresses a little bit, right? You can see it compresses probably from the start of the car all the way to this distance here. This is going to be my stopping distance. So my stopping distance, let me just write this down. Uh, stopping distance is it takes a certain amount of distance, right? This force is being applied over a certain distance. And for this problem, I'm going to assume, just based on this diagram here, it's approximately 0 0.5 meters. Could be a little bit smaller than that, could be a little bit bigger, but let's just make this assumption. This seems to be a reasonable number, okay? Uh, the other thing that we're going to have to assume in this problem here is we're looking really at an average force, okay? Actually, if you would plot what the force looks like as a function of time for this uh, car accident, you know, it might start off really small, it might end up being something pretty big and then go back down close to zero. This is probably more realistic. Okay, what we are doing here by just looking at an average force, we're going to assume that the force here is some average value and it's uniform throughout the whole time here where this compression is happening. Okay, so this is an assumption that we make. Okay, so we assume that this average force here is going to be a constant value. Okay, that also means that the acceleration of the car is also a constant. If the force is constant, the acceleration must also be constant, okay? All right, let's go now on the other page and figure out what equation I need now in order to calculate what this average force is. All right, so what is the average force? And again, I'm gonna have this displacement here of delta x, which I've assumed is about a half a meter. Uh, how do we calculate average force? Well, again, there's going to be a force acting on this uh, car and the force is a stopping force. So it has to be uh, to the left, right? That is gonna be my average force. How would we calculate what this average force is? Well, one way you could say is that this average force uh, is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration or the deceleration of this car, right? This car is going to slow down. So let's take this a little bit further. What is my definition of acceleration? 
It's the change of velocity over the change in time. All right, I can bring this down a little bit more. Uh, delta V is always a final value minus an initial divided by delta T. How much time does it take to stop that car? All right, so V final is zero. That's a simplification we can make. So let's just look at this equation. I'll bring that negative sign to the front. Minus MVI divided by delta T. Okay, so we're, we're getting there. Um, so it depends on the mass, depends on that initial speed, but also depends on this time. Actually, what I want to do now is I want to eliminate this time and get it in terms of this delta X. Okay, so how can I do that? Well, so now you have to think about the uh, kinematics of what is going on. Okay, um, delta X is going to be equal to an average velocity multiplied by the amount of time. Okay, and this average velocity is just one half V initial plus V final and multiplied by delta T. Okay, now again, the V final is zero, so that's an easy simplification we can make. Uh, so that delta X distance is one half V initial multiplied by delta T. Again, all of this is assuming that we have a constant acceleration, right? That the velocity is changing uniformly. Okay, so let's go ahead now and substitute this delta T inside my average force equation. So I get finally that my average force is equal to minus MVI and divided by now delta T. So delta T, you have to just do a little bit of algebra, bring the two over here, bring the VI at the bottom. So you get two delta X. And then there's another VI, I get divided by VI, I just bring that one to the top. All right, this is my expression here for the average force acting on any object of mass M that started at an initial velocity and that had a final velocity equal to zero. If you wanted to, you can also use a work energy theorem in order to get this result. Okay, I'll show you how to do that real quick. And the reason you can use this, again, the work done by any force is equal to the change of kinetic energy of an object. Well, this is a final value minus an initial value. Uh, the final kinetic energy has to be zero because I come to a stop. Uh, my initial kinetic energy is one half MVI squared. You can see some of the terms are starting to look quite similar. Now, how do I calculate the force or the work rather? Uh, the work, you can simply write it as a force. In this case, it's a constant force multiplied by a displacement. All right, so that becomes minus one-half MVI initial squared. So at the end, you get the average force um, minus MVI squared over 2 delta X. Okay, it doesn't matter which method you use. If we make the same assumptions, of a constant force we're able to get to our expression. So now what we want to do is go back and substitute our masses and our initial velocities and have a look at what these forces equal to for this problem. All right, let's plug in uh, some numbers over here. So for the man, uh, we set the mass is going to be approximately 80 kilograms for the car. Um, let's just say mm for the man, mc for the car, 2000 uh, kilograms. You can see that the mass is in the numerator, so it's a much larger force on the car, clearly. Um, that initial velocity is going to be the same for both. Uh, 60 miles an hour, which we converted. So we have 26.8 meters per second. Uh, what else? And the stopping distance is going to be, let's just set it equal to the same. Delta X equals 0 0.5 meters. Okay, so now we just substitute the numbers. Uh, if you're worried about that negative sign, negative sign just tells me the direction, right? The direction is clearly opposite of the displacement. The displacement is moving forward uh, by half a meter. The force is acting in the opposite direction, which is why you have that negative sign. But if you're just worried about the magnitude, uh, let's just forget about that negative sign for now. And let's just substitute our numbers, see what the average force is. All right, so the average force on the man. All right, so I would do uh, 80. Uh, 26.8 squared and then two times uh, 0 0.5 all right you calculate that average force on the man and I get approximately 57,000 say 460 newtons all right pretty big how about on the car 
on the car again just substituting just really the mass is the only difference here is 2000 when i substitute the numbers i get a giant number 100 wait one four three six four eight zero newtons wow uh, let's calculate that in different units right sometimes force you can calculate in pounds right uh the uh, conversion factor is 4.45 uh, newtons is equivalent to one pound of force so all you have to do to convert the pounds is just divide by 4.45 if i do that for the man uh, calculate that in pounds i get approximately 12,912 uh, pounds of force and for the car i'm getting approximately Oh, 322,000, say 800 approximately uh, pounds of force. Okay, so that's kind of how you would calculate that. Uh, you can also calculate what the average acceleration is. Once you know the force, you just divide by the mass. Okay, my average acceleration for both objects um, is just the force, the average force divided by the mass. So either you take uh, the man or the car value, you just have to divide it by its respective uh, mass and you're going to get the same value for both of them i get for this particular case like 718 say 0.25 meters per second uh, if you divide that by g you can calculate that in g's and little g is 9.8 so if i do that i get approximately 73.3 g's of acceleration okay which is uh, kind of a very very large number right compared to just the acceleration due to gravity right we have 73 times the acceleration due to gravity just for stopping this object all right let's kind of have a look now at some charts and see uh just have a look at this equation in more detail okay what happens if i increase the stopping distance what happens if i'm traveling faster or slower all right let's have a look at this equation in more detail all right last thing i want to do is just kind of uh just plot um what the average force looks like in terms of some of these parameters okay the uh, first thing we could do is play around with the stopping distance okay you see that the stopping distance appears in the denominator right here so which means that if i make it bigger i'm going to make the force smaller okay so the first chart i show here on the uh, left hand side here is this force in thousands of newtons and kilonewtons versus this stopping distance uh, now, the case that I considered here was um, the stopping distance of half a meter, and then I got a force of 57,000 uh, kilonewtons for the force on the man. Okay, so this is force on the man. Okay, uh, you can see now, as I make that stopping distance bigger, if I go to one meter, I get something like 30,000. If I go to two meters, I get something around 10,000 from the chart. Okay, so increasing that stopping distance um, plays a big role in reducing that average force. All right, uh, the other thing you could look at now is for a given stopping distance, right? Um, what does it look like in terms of this initial velocity, right? You see the initial velocity term shows up here as a squared term. So that actually is a big dependence on it, right? If you plot any of these curves of average force, again, force on the man, let me just be explicit here, force on the man versus this initial velocity, they're always going to have this uh, quadratic dependence here right they're not straight lines here right these are kind of growing pretty fast these curves um, the different colors here represent different stopping distances okay and again the case i considered was an initial velocity of 26.8 and then i got my force of roughly uh, 57 kilonewtons right but you can see that if you were going to double for example right if you have two times this initial velocity uh, what does that mean it means that my average force is going to increase right by a factor of four right it increases by a factor of four right so that's kind of right has a big dependence on this initial velocity all right anyway hopefully you understand this problem a little bit better now i uh, showed you how to do it we substituted some numbers just to see what the they would look like for the man versus the car thanks for watching folks